black and passing in the lily white world. See Lana Turner, John Gavin, and Sandra D in Imitation of Life tomorrow at 4. The 11 o'clock report continues now on KNXT Channel 2. From CBS News headquarters in New York, this is the CBS Sunday News with Bob Schieffer. Good evening. The Senate Watergate Committee resumes its televised hearings tomorrow morning in Washington. The senators will hear first from White House counsel Richard Moore and later in the day from Herbert Kalmbach, who until recently was the president's personal lawyer. Kalmbach is one of the key witnesses in the case, and there are indications tonight that he may be on the verge of changing the story that he first told the investigators in private. We have a report from Leslie Stahl. Senate sources say that in early interviews with staff investigators, Kalmbach strongly implicated John Ehrlichman in the Watergate cover-up. But in his latest interviews, the sources say, he's been hedging and tending to place the blame more squarely on John Dean. According to staff reports, Kalmbach will testify that it was Dean who initially approached him to raise support money for the Watergate defendants. But Kalmbach says he became so distressed by Dean's insistence on secrecy and the use of code names that he went to Ehrlichman to question Dean's authority. Kalmbach told investigators that Ehrlichman was fully aware of the payments and that he too stressed the need for complete secrecy. In a staff interview two months ago, Kalmbach reportedly told of four or five meetings with Ehrlichman to discuss the payments. But in a more recent interview, sources say he changed his story somewhat, softening his position on Ehrlichman's direct involvement. It has been reported that Kalmbach will in no way implicate President Nixon. Leslie Stahl, CBS News, Washington. Connecticut Republican Lowell Weicker, who has emerged as one of the Watergate Committee's strongest presidential critics, said today he does not favor forcing the president to testify before the committee. But he said he thought the president's handling of Watergate has been just miserable. Weicker was interviewed in New York. We're charged with getting the facts. We are not charged with getting the president. And I would be perfectly satisfied that uh, in a meeting with the president, in the Oval Office, as long as the results of that meeting were made totally public. Just as I've, quite frankly, if he wants to address himself to the subject before the press of the United States and with questions from you fellows, uh, and if I'm not there, I'd consider that proper too. Another member of the committee, Democrat Daniel Inouye, said on Face the Nation today that he favors subpoenaing the presidential papers and then letting the people make up their own minds about what it means if the president refuses to cooperate. Time Magazine says tonight that the Senate investigators are now looking into the serious possibility that 1968 campaign funds may have been used to help purchase the president's vacation home at San Clemente. Newsweek Magazine says tonight that another former White House aide, Gordon Strawn, is ready to tell the committee that former White House Chief of Staff H.R. Haldeman ordered him to shred incriminating documents shortly after the Watergate break-in. And in Washington, Congressman Les Aspen says the president's new chief of staff, General Alexander Haig, has put off getting out of the Army until August 1st just to qualify for an extra $3,300 a year in retirement pay. Aspen calls it the chintziest thing I ever heard of. Odors from your garbage can attract germ-carrying flies. But now you can cut down garbage odors without cleaning or spraying as frequently with new Shell Can Care. Can Care has a deodorant to mask odors and a proven insecticide to kill any flies, roaches, or ants that do get in. New Shell Can Care. With the good housekeeping seal, it works up to three full months, kills flies, roaches, and ants before they get into your home. Uh, you might have noticed people who shower with Life Boy have a certain advantage. Life Boy's deodorant protection never lets them down. So why let yourself in for a letdown? Or maybe even a put down? Clean up with Life Boy. Life Boy gives you a fresh, lively kind of clean, so lastingly active, its deodorant protection won't let you down. Doctors at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland say President Nixon continues to show an improving trend in his recovery from viral pneumonia. Robert Pierpoint has details. A quiet Sunday for the president after his first good night's sleep since arriving here. Mr. Nixon's temperature is almost normal, and the latest chest x-ray shows continued improvement in both lungs. 
His doctor, Walter Takash, says the prognosis now is excellent, although President Nixon is, he says, still a sick man. This afternoon, Tricia Cox visited her father for the first time, along with Julie and David Eisenhower and Mrs. Nixon, who was asked about her husband's health. How's the president? Although everyone seems to agree the president is getting better every day, Dr. Takash now says it will be next Friday at the earliest before he can leave here. Robert Pierpoint, CBS News, Bethesda Naval Hospital. The Senate Armed Services Committee is opening an investigation tomorrow into a report that the United States was carrying out bombing raids in Cambodia in early 1970, long before government spokesmen were willing to admit it. The raids were so secret that former Air Force Major Hal Knight says that officers burned the records authorizing the flights. Connie Chung has some new developments on the story tonight in Washington. Pentagon sources confirm the secret bombing raids in Cambodia and the destruction of documents to keep the facts secret. A Pentagon source said Prince Nordam Sihanouk, the Cambodian chief of state, was well aware of the bombing, but as the source put it, things were done in secret because there was a heavy dose of diplomacy involved. Senate sources also said that some members of Congress knew of the bombing and that it was coordinated between Prince Sihanouk and the U.S. government. Senator Harold Hughes, whose staff talked with former Air Force Major Knight, criticized the alleged cover-up, claiming that the destruction of documents is against the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The new Air Force Chief of Staff, General George Brown, who directed tactical air operations in Southeast Asia at that time, reportedly told the Senate Armed Services Committee last Friday he was aware of the bombing raids, but knew nothing of the falsified documents. Connie Chung, CBS News, Washington. In Cambodia today, American bombers struck on all sides of the capital city of Phnom Penh, and on the ground there was heavy fighting to the north, west, and south of the capital. Rebel troops are now reported as close as 10 miles from Phnom Penh. A Cambodian general said the situation is very grave. The two members of the Canadian peacekeeping force who were captured by the Viet Cong two weeks ago were released today. They were in good condition, but the Viet Cong told them to stay out of Viet Cong territory in the future. This is ABC. James Francisca stars tonight at 6.30. Here's what's happening now. Police throughout Southern California tonight are still baffled about the kidnapped murder following a high-speed chase early today on the San Diego freeway. Two persons died of shotgun blasts, and the only surviving victim remains in a state of shock tonight. Andy Park has been on the story most of the day, just back from the scene. Here's his report. Andy? A berserk kidnapper was cut down in a hail of bullets just seconds after he shotgunned a housewife hostage to death this morning. The wild shooting spree took place on the San Diego freeway at the U.S. Border Patrol checkpoint at San Onofre at 8 this morning. Dead are 24-year-old Gary Raphael, a San Diego plumber, the accused kidnapper, and 50-year-old Mrs. Clara Coronado. Police say Raphael kidnapped Mr. and Mrs. John Coronado from their San Diego home, forced them to drive him north on the freeway. They were stopped at the Border Patrol checkpoint. Just momentarily after that, uh, the victim's husband, who was in the passenger side, uh, broke out of a van. So the last time I saw her, I inched up pretty close inside the van. He couldn't, I don't think he could see me, and I couldn't see her. I was trying to get a, a shot at the guy, uh, you know, to try to kill him, but uh, the glare was, his windshield went one way and ours went another, and I could just see a rough outline, and I was afraid I'd kill her too, you know. So uh, I just, I didn't shoot, and uh, he screamed out. He said, I'm gonna kill this woman. You know, I'm gonna kill her. I said, I'm gonna kill this woman. And I, I could see that he had his arm around her neck and uh, looked like he had a, the shotgun right at the back of her head. And, and uh, I eased back and about the time that, you know, the shooting started and it uh, just seemed like the shotgun blast went off and the, uh, the troopers uh, started shooting and, uh, you know, just a lot of shooting. Police are still sifting physical evidence from the grisly scene, trying to find a motive for the wild series of events. A working companion of Raphael's told police he was driving the man to work this morning when he pulled a sawed-off shotgun, jumped out at the Coronado's home, and forced the couple into the van. Coronado, who escaped when the van was stopped at San Onofre, said that Raphael's last words before he shot Coronado's wife were, Now the fun begins.
This is Eyewitness News, the 6 o'clock report with John Schubeck, Bernard Morris, Stu Nahan, George Fishbeck, and the Eyewitness News team.